kingdom of Christ and God on earth as it is in heaven, you are in the flesh. Consider the prayer that Christ gave instruction to the disciples. He began, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's an introduction. Hallowed be thy name. What's the first supplication he said? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ought not to be looking how to get us to heaven. We ought to be looking how to get heaven to us. Thy kingdom come. If we are only after our sins being forgiven and us getting to heaven, that's selfish. Christ did not die on the cross just so you could be forgiven of your sins, but he died that you may know the one true God in Jesus Christ whom he has sent, and to know the one true God in Christ whom he sent, Christ in you, the hope of glory, his burdens are your burdens, his cares are your cares, and his care is the kingdom of God on earth, because it was never meant to be this way. It was never meant to be this worldly world that we live in, but Adam walked with God. Adam walked with God in the garden. He walked with God, and that is what we are called to do. And if you're walking with God, everything around you changes. I dare not hear someone say they're walking with God cursing. They're walking with God in a bar. They're walking with God drunk. They're walking with God, and everything around them is carnal. Last week, we began to talk about Jonah. We began to talk about Jonah very briefly. So God called Jonah to go to Nineveh. This is a very blessed lesson that the Lord spoke to me. I actually heard it through Derek Prince. Credit where credit due. Honor is where honor is due. A blessed man of God. Maybe a reason when God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, maybe a reason he didn't want to go was because at that time, Nineveh was a sort of political enemy of Israel. They were not the chosen people of God. You know? It, they were a political enemy. But let us consider this. Maybe he didn't want them to repent. We know this, that it was the greatest conversion ever, probably to this day. An estimated 600,000 people lived in Nineveh. 600,000. It was one of the metropolises of the day. 600,000. My goodness, I'd be tempted to go too. But they converted. It was the greatest conversion ever. A king and all the people in the kingdom. But before this happened, Jonah had to learn a lesson. What was that lesson, you might ask? Turn with me to Jonah chapter 1. Now, before we go to Jonah, so he lived in a town called uh, Gath Hefer. It was a town of Israel called Gath Hefer. It was on a mountainous region. Jonah lived in the mountains of Israel at the time, of Gath Hefer. And you notice from the point he decided that he was not going to do God's will, he went perpetually down. He went from the mountains of Israel to the plains. He went from the plains to the harbor. He went from the harbor to the dock. He went from the dock to the ship. From the ship to the bottom of the sea. If you begin to run from God's call on your life, you too will go perpetually down. And if you don't get it right before you leave this earth, you go even below the sea, to the depths of the earth, to the lake of fire. There are many Jonas today. Jonah chapter 1. Verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amilta, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he prayed the fair thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Down. Down is the theme. Down. 
Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea. They got rid of everything on the boat. They're crying unto their God. You see, at this time, it was very common for men to have many different gods. And, and, and they were calling everyone out to his God. Save us, save us. They're throwing stuff off the ship. Then the mariners were afraid, excuse me, to lighten it of them. But Jonah, the end of verse 5, was gone down into the sides of the ship. And he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perished not. How many Jonas are asleep at the bottom of the ship while the world is being tempest torn and torn and they're calling upon their God and where's the Christians? They might be not saying it to you in flesh but they're saying it in spirit. Call upon your God. Call upon your God. What are you doing thou that sleepest? The world's looking around and they see everything going on and Christians are fast asleep running from God. Running from God. There are many Jonas today. They know full well what God has called them to do, but it did not suit them. While the world is being tossed and torn on the brink of perishing, they are fast asleep at the bottom of the ship. They are asleep spiritually because as the alcoholic runs to his alcohol to hide him from his reality, the one who runs from God fills his life with distractions, anything to hide him, from the conviction of the call of God on his life. Because he knows if he's not asleep spiritually, being distracted, that he's left with that void in his heart, calling him back to his first love. Distracted. And that's what the enemy will do. If he can keep you distracted, he will till the day you perish. If we don't wake up and go to the bow of the ship and say, I've sinned against God, throw me into the sea. I'm the reason of this. I need to repent. I need to be submerged in the death of Christ again. I need to go into the waters. Then we'll also perish in that boat. And the world will perish with you. But how many people on the boat will be saved? Did those mariners die? No. Because Jonah went out and got in the water. And a big fish came. You know, everything seems to be fine and dandy when we run from God until you end up in the belly of a whale. Everything seems to be just fine until you end up in the belly of a whale. Don't go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. <clears throat> First Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 7 says uh, verse 27 Art thou bound unto a wife? Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brethren, this is what I want you to catch. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. And they that weep as though they wept not. And as they that rejoice as though, as they that, excuse me, as though they had rejoiced not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passes away. He that is of this world, not to abuse it. We don't abuse this world. 
We are not of this world, but we are in this world. Okay. Now, there's a verse in Romans 12, verse 21. Be not overcome by evil. Catch this. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Two choices. Be overcome or overcome. You'll either be overcome by evil or you will overcome evil with good. There is only one thing that can overcome evil and that is good. And we know that Christ says there is none good but God only. We cannot overcome a negative with a negative. Only good overcomes. We cannot overcome this negative outlook but with negative response. Only good. One more time. Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Two choices. Be overcome by this world. Overcome this world. Be overcomers. Be overcome. Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8. Verse 35. <clears throat> says, praise the name of the Lord, it says, <clears throat> who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. More than conquerors, more than conquerors shall tribulation, trial, sword, persecution, famine, distress, nothing shall overcome. For we are more than conquerors. Are you being conquered? Or are you conquering? Are you being overcome? Or are you overcoming? Be not deceived. Be not deceived, folks. Be not deceived. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says this, beginning at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, please listen to these words. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did eat all the same spiritual meat. And they did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed him, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted, because they were overthrown in the wilderness. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, and as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Mm, 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 mm. There are many Christians playing, playing around. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpents. Who are the serpents? The tormentors. The tormentors. You will be given over. Given over. And eventually, a reprobate mind. This is something that ought to scare us. The Gospels talk about being given over to the tormentors. These spirits that will possess and, and make you miserable and unhappy and empty and weak. And God doesn't want any of that for you. He didn't want any of that for Jonah. But it had to happen. Because nothing else was going to get it to him. Nothing else would shake him enough that he might wake up. Thou sleeper, arise. They were eaten. Destroyed of the serpents. They fell. They were overthrown in the wilderness. God loved them. God saw them in Egypt as slaves and delivered them with a mighty outstretched arm filled with signs and wonders. 
And they saw the signs and wonders. He fed them manna. He's given us manna, the daily bread which cometh down from heaven, which is Christ. He's given us this. He's given us the anointing oil in church. You get the Holy Ghost. You get filled. He's giving you the spiritual water, the living water. And yet we're tempting Christ. And some of us will be overthrown in the wilderness. He doesn't want that to happen. But I'm afraid, sincerely afraid, that many are not going to wake up to this reality. It hasn't, the gravity hasn't hit them. That God is not one to be tempted. <clears throat> Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Uh, and I want you guys to hone in on this. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured. And we're destroyed of the destroyer. I am going forward. And I come across people who, who they're believers. And I want to talk about the Lord. I want to talk about things of the kingdom of God. I want to, I want to encourage and edify and strengthen. And it seems that you cannot talk to a believer without them delving into politics. Without them going and murmuring about circumstances in the world. Murmuring. You know what the word murmur means in Webster's 1828? To grumble, to complain, to utter sullen discontent. How many Christians, listener, people in the church, how many Christians have you come across and immediately they murmur? They grumble. Ah, oh, those Democrats. Ah, oh, those Republicans. Ah, oh, Obama. Ah, oh, Trump. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. God did not call us to be a part of the problem. You cannot overcome a negative with a negative, but with a good. Neither murmur ye. Why? Because when you murmur, you aren't rejoicing. You begin to lose sight of a salvation so rich, so good, so pure that God has given you. That you have forgotten that in this world you will have tribulation, you will have persecution, but have good cheer. I have overcome the world. We have lost sight of eternity. We have put our sight on this world and we're mad because we're not comfortable. Things are going our way. Well, how do you think Daniel felt? How do you think, um, How do you think Daniel felt? How do you think Jeremiah felt? That's where I was going. Jeremiah. Jeremiah was in Israel when they were besieged by Babylon. Was the judgment meant for Jeremiah? No. But he was a part of it. He was there. He was taken away. His things were lost. But he didn't murmur. No. He was seeking the word of the Lord for the people of God. He was going to God because the people were perishing. They were dying. And yet here we are. Murmuring. First John chapter 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise the Lord. You have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you, dear friends. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Oh, friends, open your ears. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, and we knoweth God, or he that knoweth God heareth. Excuse me. Excuse me. We are of God, and he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. This Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. He who is God will hear us. He who is not of God will not hear us, but will rather talk about the rudiments of this world. The Bible says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. A good soldier does not entangle himself in the affairs of this life that he might please the one who enlisted him to be a soldier. Do not conform yourself to the rudiments of this world, for the rudiments of this world are passing away. 
They're passing away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall remain steadfast. Here's the theme. Revelation 21, 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. Every promise of God in the Bible is only for he that overcomes. Seek the word of God and find me one promise of God that is not for the one who has overcome. You might say the main excuse of the world. What about the man on the cross? That man on the cross overcame. He was hung on a tree being crucified and he did not say, oh, I'll just save us. He wasn't worried about himself. He deserved it. He said, Lord, remember me. He overcame every promise in the word of God is for he who overcomes. It is for he who overcomes in the name of Jesus and he has grace sufficient for each one of his children to overcome. For my grace is sufficient for thee. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. So I will boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. It's not a time to run. It's a time to embrace. It's not a time to run from conviction. It's a time to bow before the throne of God and say, Lord, it's me. Lord, it's me. I fail. I'm a sinner. And I need you. And his grace is sufficient. But many people, they don't want to face that. They don't want to say I've sinned. They don't want to say I've gone astray. They're too prideful. It's the pride that is blinding us. We need to go before the Lord and say, it's me, God. It's me. I'm guilty. It's not the world, Lord. Let the punishment come upon me. I deserve it. As the man on the cross said, I deserve it. I'll die, but you will live. Remember me. Remember me. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Even our faith. Your faith is what gets you to the sky. Faith in who? Faith in yourself? God forbid it. Faith in Christ. Faith in his holy work on the cross. Faith in the redemption and the resurrection. He was no longer in the flesh, but yet he lived. Yet not him, but Christ liveth in us. When he died, he died once to the flesh, to the body. He was resurrected in the spirit. And we are dead with Christ and resurrected in the spirit. Do not walk in the flesh. Mortify the deeds of the flesh and the affections thereof. 